Hi, thanks for joining me. So today we're going to talk about my translation project work for quarter three of 2018. I did the same thing for quarter two. Uh, I just have so much progress going on on these projects that uh, it seems like talking about them every quarter is um, is appropriate. So we're going to start off here with Magic Knight Ray Earth on the Game Gear. I did spoke about this in my last video, but this project has now been released. So very excited. We have a you know an unofficial, uh, fully playable English translation patch for you to enjoy. Uh, this was worked on by myself and Supper. Uh, I probably mentioned before, um, you know, Supper dumped a bunch of, I think it was like maybe fixed with text or, uh, anyway, just some more text in the game that I hadn't dumped originally that I had to translate, and that took a while, and, you know, Supper did some really great hacking work on this, got, like, these really nice long uh, item names and character names and things like that in here, um, you know, expanded so that there's space for the script to fit in nicely without cutting it down. Um, so I think this came out wonderfully, just a really, really great project. Uh, it is a RPG, and uh, it is pretty short. It's about probably five, six, maybe seven hours tops. Um, but, you know, being on a handheld, that might be kind of appropriate. And additionally, you know, uh, Supper speculates that the production of this probably got cut down a little bit, and that wouldn't surprise me since there was a, a like a themed, a branded, handheld for the Magic Knight Rare Earth game and stuff coming out, they probably had some deadlines in terms of getting it done in time for the release of the console and things like that. Um, also, you know, they were working on other games for like the Saturn and things like that concurrently, I think, with this. But uh, but anyway, it's a cool little game, especially if you like Magic Knight Rare Earth. I think you will enjoy Magic Knight Rare Earth RPG on the Game Gear. A uh, really cool uh, release. I'm, I'm just excited. It's been so many years. It's been so many years that this has been kicking around. So that's that's what's the most exciting about this for, for me personally. Uh, next up, actually another game that has been years in the making, um, and that is Aretha. Now, I've talked about these before. Uh, it's actually a series of RPGs on the Game Boy. And so they made a Super Nintendo one, which it's hard to tell. I don't know if it's really like a remake of one of the other games, but it's it's called uh, like Aretha on Super Nintendo or something like that to differentiate it from the Game Boy games. But anyway, Aretha one, or just Aretha. It's an RPG. You play as this girl, um, and you know have this great. RPG adventure with a lot of you know fantasy elements and stuff. It's it's super cool. Uh, the thing with this is that it was something that Dynamic Designs was talking about and you know approached me about translating like so many years ago. I mean it was probably I started working on Aretha 2, which was the first one we started working on, and it was I don't know seven or eight years ago at this point. Uh, I think Aretha. Um, I think my, my translation of the script of Aretha 1 has been, has been done probably for like five years. Uh, it's been a long time. So anyway, um, so yeah, all production issues, uh, you know, have been resolved for the Aretha project. Uh, and Aretha 1 is out. So I'm really excited about it. Now, I think anybody that likes, you know, classic, traditional, turn-based RPGs on the Super Nintendo, Super Famicom, I think there's a ton to love about this game. Uh, translating the script was fun, it's really charming. The uh, the enemy designs and stuff are really cartoony. It's a very interesting art style, but I mean it seems like a relatively serious game, I guess aside from it being, you know, fairly humorous and it, I mean, maybe, maybe I, sh I shouldn't, it, like it's, it's a relatively serious story, but I think there's a lot of, um, of fun stuff to it, so. Uh, you know, it has its own personality. I think it's really cool. So um, now this this game, it uh, it got kind of a stealth release, so to speak, on Dynamic Designs, you know, site, and it, it was added to ROMHacking.net, but it hasn't had like a news post or anything like that. So I'm 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 not worried, but I think that some people that would probably want to know about this this release don't know about it. So you know, English language translation patch for Aretha. Um, I'm telling you about it here, so uh, so go check it out. It's it's a cool game. Uh, next up, we have some more Game Gear stuff, <clears throat> and well, one more Game Gear game, I guess, and then some some Famicom stuff. But anyway, <laughs> so um, 
so these are projects that I had a little bit less to do with but I talked about this in my last video is that I really want to um, to not just be the only one who's working on these projects I don't mind you know like I translated Dray Earth and Aretha and I've been translating other games here and if I can pass some stuff off to some other people to work on that's great we're getting more projects done overall and I love it so um, so Demon Child Zenki you may remember that we did a Demon Child Zenki game on the Super Nintendo but this is one on the Game Gear um, you know Kishin Doji Zenki in Japanese and um, this is a script that I dumped I think I talked about dumping it in my last video and this was passed on to uh, CCC Mar uh, I believe on YouTube here they are Marius Amber um, who typically watches these videos and comments on them and uh, they're really you know active very involved in the fan translation scene and um, so they uh, basically took this script uh, teamed up with the Majin Zenki very appropriately um, is, is the handle of the translator and translated the script for me and um, were a uh, supper did the hacking for this so this was something where basically my involvement was really just dumping the script and then I did a little translation check on it just adjusted some things the way that, that I like it in the script and we went ahead and released it so um, so this is awesome this is another one that I think is uh, you know it I don't know like it maybe went under the radar just a little bit um, I don't remember if we did a news post on realmhacking.net or not I feel like we did uh, I think we did, but uh, I still sort of feel like, eh, you know, on YouTube and stuff, nobody's really, like, done a, a, a gameplay video on it or anything like that, or, you know, I guess I shouldn't say that, I think, I think Sh Shiryu GL did a gameplay video on it, but anyway, nobody's done, like, a full playthrough or anything, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, my point is, this looks like a really cool game on the Game Gear, it's a, it's a platformer, it's a side-scrolling platformer, and I think the graphics are super great for the Game Gear. And you know, some people have said this is probably one of the one of the best platformers on the Game Gear. Uh, it seems really cool, so I hope people play it and enjoy it. Uh, next up, oh, and I just wanted to say, you know, of course, thank you to Supper and uh, CCC Mar and uh, and the Majin Zenki for working on that. Uh, next up is Detective Sanma, Sanma no Me Tante, and this is a, another game that I had dumped a script for, and so same thing. Um, that whole crew. Uh, decided to go ahead and, and run with it. Now, um, I actually did, once we were going to pass this on to the Majin Zenki to translate, I actually redumped the script, uh, adding in character names. So this is something you can do depending on how the game is programmed. If there's some way, like, within the script, uh, I guess what I mean is, like, in line with the script that it uh, that it displays the uh, triggers the display for the character names so I I picked up on that and it was a little tricky it wasn't that hard but I had to write a whole bunch of regular expressions um, to capture the character names and sort of insert them into the script that's how I decided to do it so it was it, it wasn't super time-consuming probably took me like an hour or two but it, it was extra work and extra effort I really wanted to kind of like polish this script and make it as easy as possible for um, the Majin Zenki to, to translate so that was a little extra I put in on Detective Sanma and uh, yeah you know passed that on and that one was was completed so uh, we have another uh, this is a Famicom game um, a detective adventure game and it's kind of a spoof uh, I think on you know stuff like Portopia that got popular um, and it's it's using a um, I guess comedians like Japanese comedians I don't know I feel like they almost you know may, may, they might have done something outside of the game as well uh, with these these comedians but um, but you know these real life personalities are sort of inserted in the game so it's it's got a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek uh, you know, humor I think to it and it's also it's all in uh, Kansai Ben so um, so I think that CCC Mar and the Majin Zenki chose to interpret that a little bit as like a little bit of a southern accent that we would have here in in America and it's you know they're analogous um, the Kansai area is sort of the the south of Japan and then you've got the more in the north of Japan has a little bit more what people would call standard Japanese like sort of in Tokyo and things like that so uh, so that was an interesting uh, choice uh, for that and I think uh, I think it works uh, works well uh, 
definitely recommend checking that game out. Uh, next up we have the release of Outlanders. Now, um, actually, I, th I, I guess chronologically that isn't the next one, but anyway, that's the one I'm talking about, uh, is Outlanders. So this is another one where I dumped the script, and I just, somebody, you know, I, we were able to hand it off and have somebody else do the work on it. I, I love it. Uh, so this was... Uh, a. Andy Hen offered to translate the script for this, so she translated that, got that back to me. I think I spoke about that in a video or two ago. And um, just, not really randomly, but just out of the blue, um, I, you know, I had posted a help wanted ad for this on romhacking.net, and Pluvius came out and they're like, hey, so I've made enough progress on this that I want to let you know that I guess I'm taking on this project. So um, they had hacked the game, um, you know, gotten the, got the most of the script inserted. They were still waiting on the intro, uh, the translation for the intro. And, you know, it's funny, like, the intro is the first thing in the game, so I figure that I was aware that the intro, you know, needed to be translated. But uh, just between, like, dumping the script originally and handing it off to A.E. and Han and getting it back, like, I was just like, oh, the script is all done. But I, I it had just slipped my mind. So I went ahead and actually redumped the intro text and I ended up translating the intro um, you know posted it for A.N. Nihen to, to give feedback on and she actually ended up seeing that and said no this is great so we went ahead of that so I ended up doing the the intro translation but uh, it's a it's a cool game it's an action uh, RPG and you know I say cool game it's it's programmed by Micronics so it's I think what most Japanese players would, would call kusoge, but I actually did some searching on uh, the internet uh, in Japanese language for, you know, what they call captures or like guides or walkthroughs for uh, this game in Japanese. And it's just, it's interesting. It seems like this game in particular has like a little more interest in it than some of these, you know, what people would call sort of like crummy, crappy games. Um, Probably because of its source material, you know, Outlanders is a, a manga series by Joji Manabe. It had a uh, an anime OVA and stuff like that, which I have since gotten and seen. And uh, it's just interesting, but um, it's it's funny. The first battle is is like ridiculously hard. I've seen like a video of this person trying it like a dozen times and not being able to get through it. You can get through it. Um, it's you just kind of have to like line the enemies up and and attack them from a certain angle and then you'll you'll defeat them and you can keep going but um but yeah you know not the best programmed game uh, i think the uh creator I, I at least read in japanese language is on the record as as thinking it was you know sort of an, uh, an atrocious game <laughs> but uh but i think it's it, you know it's fun um with this english translation i think some people could really get some fun out of this game so i hope that people check it out you know, I think um, there's something to be said even for, you know, sort of quote-unquote bad games. Um, you know, have, have some fun in them. And, uh, you know, I think that they're worth checking out. So uh, next up, we have another script that I dumped. I'm sure I talked about this previously. Idle Hakenden. Uh, this was one uh, also that was passed on to um, CCC Mar and the Imagine Zenki and Supper. So uh, that trio uh, banged out another... Uh, another game again on the Famicom. This is an adventure game. I've talked about it before. It's by uh, Yeah, I forget who it's by. It's just some some famous developers and <laughs> yeah, I can only love to check my other video I just forget but uh, but yeah, anyway, it's like about uh, a girl who is gonna become an idol and she's doing it in order to um, to get her like become the inheritor of her I thought it was her grandmother's fortune, but I think in the in the translation they say it, it was her mother. So, wh whichever one it is, um, she's you know she's competing with her sisters to inherit the the fortune and sort of the business of of her uh, her predecessors. So um, so she basically goes on this journey, uh, and the Hakenden you know it's pulling in this kind of classical novel where um, you have these eight these eight warriors so she has to like find these eight people to help her in her quest to become a popular idol a pop singer and you know so she uh she goes on this adventure and it's this adventure game now from what i hear from the Majin Zenki 
uh, and CCC Mar is that this was a you know a, a challenging script to translate, and you know uh, it definitely has some Kansai Ben and things like that in it. So I figured, eh, you know, it's going to be a little challenging. But I think it also has like a lot of puns and things like that in it. So I think it was a little tricky in in that regard. But uh, anyway, I'm um, super excited to see this this game out here. A couple of adventure games, Detective Sanma, Idol Hikenden. We've got a um, an action RPG in Outlanders, a nice platformer in Zenki, a couple RPGs in Magic Knight Ray Earth and Aretha. So very excited about that. Now I'm going to put in, this is mostly just a little plug, I had nothing to do with these projects, but because it was worked on by that uh, same trio, um, you know, Majin Zenki, CCC, Mar, and Supper, uh, just an FYI, they also released Ripple Island, which is another adventure game for the Famicom, which I've taken a look at in the past, but I, I had a little trouble you know, getting anywhere with it, so Supper, of course, excuse me, I'm sure handled it no problem. So, um, Vilgust is a retranslation of something that was translated, like, way, way back, and, <laughs> you know, the... the the culture was a little bit different in in the translation scene and and just anyway it was just kind of a mess a huge mess of an old translation patch so they retranslated uh vilgust you know redid the hacking for it i'm sure supper did an awesome job uh you guys might want to check that out so continuing on with my progress uh not everything is released uh scripts in fact i would say like you know their release translation projects probably like 80 80 90 percent of the work happens on stuff that is never maybe not is never released but you know hasn't been released yet so um so yeah i took a look at vegas connection on the famicom i was vaguely interested in that i i kind of uh you know ccc mar and the Majin Zenki wanted some more adventure games and I've I've been interested in Vegas Connection for quite a while. It's of course a like a gambling game, but it apparently has this whole like big adventure game element to it and it just sounded really cool. Um, but it uses a, a switch bite. So as it goes through the script, you run across I think it's a I think it's 40. You get bite 40, you know, or 40. And that swaps uh, between hiragana and katakana. So there's no way because the, basically the same um, the same values the same bytes are going to represent the characters in hiragana as they are in katakana you can't just naively like dump a script for this using a table file like you have to program in something that's going to like swap uh, you know what the what the representation of those those values are so i have to write a custom dumper for that that's just a necessity so i i'm i'm planning to but it's not something i mean there's like a million other things i can work on so i've just made note that if i want to keep working on vegas connection it needs a custom script dumper and i'll have to write that uh, speaking of custom script dumpers, though, uh, I did finish dumping the script for Saint Tail on the Game Gear. This is sort of the project that keeps on going, but, uh, you know, I found, I actually just found that my table file was kind of wrong. Not really wrong, but it was, it, it needed adjustment, so I adjusted it, uh, I found a little bit more text, I dumped that, and I translated it, and I have translated all the text for Saint Tail, and that's been passed, as far as I know, uh, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's been passed on to Supper, so, um, so I think Supper's gonna, gonna work on that, he offered to work on that for me, uh, so, uh, so I'm excited about that. Again, this is like, this has become like a pet project of mine because I've had to put so much work into it. No one else cares about the Saint Tail and the Game Gear. It's like a mini game collection for the most part. It seems fun and cute, but no one's going to care about that game uh, at nearly as much as I do at this point. So anyway, I kept dumping scripts for Game Gear games. I'm really interested in dumping as many scripts for as many Game Gear games that are left as possible. Uh, I've I've dumped like I don't know probably at this point 16, 17 scripts. And um, there's only about, I think, 59, 60 games that haven't been localized in some form. So, you know, we're making progress. Uh, I dumped a script for Ninku, which is, you know, again, based on some sort of manga anime, um, some kind of ninja thing. Uh, anyway, I just took a look at it, and it was pretty easy to dump a script for, so that is dumped. Uh, maybe I will make that available for someone else to translate if they would like, or, you know, translate it myself at some point. Uh, I also dumped and translated a script for Crayon Shinchan Showdown Kantam Panic. Uh, this would be Crayon Shinchan Taiketsu Kantam Panic. And 
This is another minigame collection, similar to Saint Tail. Uh, it seems to be almost a little, a little more of a traditional minigame collection in that you just go from one minigame to another. I mean, a little more directly than you do in Saint Tail, although it's it's pretty similar. Um, but you know, there are these seems like these story sort of cutscenes uh, interspersed, and yeah, it was it was. I kind of want to call it fun to translate. Um, I mean, it's Crayon Shinchan. I like Crayon Shinchan. I've seen the cartoon, the, the anime back in the day, and I, I've enjoyed it. It's very funny. Shinchan is just this bratty kid, and it's about him and his family and all the hijinks, like the the grief that he puts his family through. But you know, it's it's still kind of uh, it's still kind of cute and heartwarming <laughs> in some ways. <laughs> uh, and there's a lot of like fart jokes, and, and Shinchan is like is you know. Uh, like ogling women all the time and stuff. It's funny. Um, so, so yeah, this was kind of a fun script to translate. Um, yeah, and it's done. So I'm excited about that. The, I have not, you know, gotten, for instance, Supper to agree to translate it or anything like that. It's just, it's just a script that's sitting there finished currently. And, uh, you know, I'll probably make, either offer it on romhacking.net or just, you know, make it available to Supper uh, at some point if he feels like working on that. Uh, next up, I dumped scripts for Kunichan no Game Tengoku parts one and two. Uh, so two games were released for the Game Gear in the Kunichan Kunichan's game game paradise, basically. Uh, and these are also mini game collections. I guess these were popular. Maybe you know they were probably relatively easy to make. And it seems like when you have these licensed properties like um, Saint Tail and Cran Shinchan, I guess this was this was a go-to genre. Now Kunichan, I don't know a whole lot about, but she's a she's an entertainer. She's a Japanese entertainer performer that was like popular in the eighties, probably nineties when these games came out. I mean that would send the reason. So, um, so I don't know a whole lot about her. I don't even really know what she does. She might she might sing. She might just perform. She might be a comedian. You know, just one of those Japanese entertainment personalities. And um, so I guess she was popular popular enough that they made a couple couple games. Uh, featuring her, and it has, you know, a collection of mini-games. Uh, they, they seem they seem pretty fun, you know, I mean, just in terms of, you know, as far as mini-game collections go. But uh, for the first one in particular, the script was, it was so nicely, like, programmed. The script was all in one block, and it was super easy to dump. And then you get into the second one, and it was, like, more of a pain in the butt, and, like, it just, it was less fun to work on. But, um... You know, I will probably translate at least the first one because that seemed like that was pretty easy to translate. I'll probably translate both of them uh, at some point. I have not started working on those. Uh, next, I did some work on a game called World Derby. It's a uh, like a horse racing simulation, it seems like, but I haven't actually played it, so I'm not entirely sure. But this was tricky, and uh, it's still it's still giving me some problems. So what happened with this is I found an eight by eight font in the ROM that I was able to view with a tile viewer. I was like, okay, great, here's the font. So I made a table file based on the 8x8 font, and then I, you know, tried to find some text in the game. It turns out, you know, that the I wasn't really thinking clearly at the time, but the text is, uh, it's actually 12 by 16, I thought it was 16 by 16, but it's larger text. And I didn't, I never found the font for that 12 by 16 text in the ROM with the tile viewer. Um, and so it's you know it's it's different text. Uh, it's calling up different text tiles when it's displaying the um, this 12 by 16 text, and it's encoded slightly differently than the 8 by 8 text is. So I, I made a was able to make a partial table file based on the order of the font of uh, the 8 by 8 font for the 12 by 16 um, font script but it's incomplete and that it's incomplete because there's a ton of kanji that uh, is included in that font and i just i just don't know what it is you know i can find out as i go through the script if i can see it on the screen so what i probably am going to have to do i asked for help for this on romhacking.net i asked for help for this on sms power and you know the consensus at least like the one person that gave me some advice on sms power was you probably are just going to need to you know, to actually see it in game, you're going to have to go ahead and write something to insert the values in, in you know, in order uh, into the into the game, into the ROM, and, and just view them, you know, consecutively. And I wanted to avoid that. It's not that big a deal, but I haven't really 
written an insertion script like that usually if I have to insert stuff like that I just do it by hand and it I mean there's too many values I couldn't do it by hand so I'll have to I'll have to program something and I just I don't feel like doing that right now for World Derby so that's going on the back burner uh, something I did do a little programming for though is Moldorian I talked about in this this is in the last video but uh, CCC Mar and the Majin Zenki and even Supper are actually have been chomping at the bit. They've been really interested in working on Moldorian. I had made a table file and dumped a script from Moldorian, kind of, you know, a fair amount back, a number of months now. But it was messy, and that's because the script is all in these like small chunks of text all over the ROM. So what I did is just manually again, there was no easy way to do this. I like went through just visually and picked out each and every bit of text that I could find in the in the ROM. So that was I took note of about 150 offset pairs and I wrote my script. I updated my script to allow for the merging of the blocks because I didn't want to like dump 150 little little blocks of text. So I merged this all into one single file which was it was it was easy. But um you know finding all the 150 blocks wasn't exactly easy. It was tedious, but I did it over like a, about a week just working on it like you know an hour a night. And um, yeah, and I gave it back to CC, CMAR, and TMZ. Um, so yeah, hopefully they're going to translate Moldorian, and uh, Supper will do the hacking on that, and that will be available. So I'm excited about that. Uh, and just a few more scripts I dumped here. I did a uh, dumped a script for Hono no Tokyuji Dodge Donpe. Now this is a again a manga and anime. I think uh, at least an anime about a. Uh, like dodgeball, it's some sort of. I haven't looked into it, but it's it's something like, you know, like burning, um, you know, battle battle ball kid is you know essentially what the the Japanese means for that dodge don pay. It's like a dodgeball game. So um, so yeah, there there have been games for that like on every single system imaginable. Um, so so yeah, that's a script that's available. Uh, I may translate that. I may pass it on to someone else. Um, I also dumped a script for uh, Todarete Tamaruka, which is a um, I don't know what you call it. It's it's a game where you're defending a home from burglars. Um, I've seen a, a couple, few other games like this where you're sort of defending a, a location from from invaders. I mean, I guess it's almost like a you know tower defense, but it doesn't play like a doesn't really play like a tower defense, but it's a similar concept, I guess. It has a couple different kinds of text, and it wasn't too hard to find them. I might have had to make a couple table files, but there's there's a little bit of text in the game that I can't find. It's just these messages that pop up like while you're during battle. I can't find them. I don't really know how they're encoded in the ROM. So somebody that does technical work on this, when it comes time to insert the script, might have to find those themselves. Um, but uh, I've dumped enough to this, you know, to translate um, basically like all the dialogue text and the shop text that shows up. So, um, so yeah, I might translate that up. Uh, kind of excited about that. Uh, and I also just, uh, based on a request on Twitter, somebody was, in, you know, they had seen that I translated. Uh, I didn't translate. They had seen I dumped the script for Outlanders and had. Um, e and Nihen translate that and Pluvius uh, do the technical work on that and they were like, oh, hey, uh, have you considered working on the Famicom Jump Hero Retsuden series, which is like um, the Hero, Hero Chronicles or, or Heroes Chronicle and it's um, it's a series, there's at least two games in it um, of like so jump shonen jump is what we're talking about it's a manga manga magazine like a you know a serial where these these uh, uh manga are are serialized i'm sure you you know 99% of you guys know what fam, uh, what shonen jump is and uh so you know back in the 80s in 1988 they made a um an rpg that like combined all of their popular shonen jump i mean it might have even been everything that was serialized in shonen jump at the time but you had like fist of the north star and dragon ball and i think it might have been dragon ball z at the time i don't really remember um and, and like city hunter and just a bunch of other stuff that I don't even know what it is. Those are like the popular ones that I know. Oh well, that was actually uh, Ko Kochikame, uh, which I think is pretty is, is funny. It's a, it's a funny sh uh, car cartoon. Anyway, so um, 
So they mashed all these characters up in this RPG, and it was programmed by Tosei, so it's 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 not very good. And I think I've looked at it, you know, I've considered it over the years. And the main reason I stayed away from it is that I'm like, well, I don't know all of the jump properties that are that are involved in it. You know, maybe somebody else would, you know, would be better served translating it. And also, eh, it's by Tosei, and it's probably not very good. And I didn't, anyway, I just never looked at it. So anyway, someone was like, oh, hey, have you looked at them? So I was like, well, I'll take a look. So I dumped the script for the first one. Um, and it wasn't that bad. There's uh, basically two kinds of text encoding. It seems like once you get to a certain point in the ROM, I don't know if it's like where it's switched to another bank or something, but it starts loading the font differently. So all mostly like it just uses the values differently and for the hiragana and katakana it's all the same but for the voiced characters it's different and they, that was actually really confusing for me at first um, but once I figured it out it's like okay I get it so I had to make two table files I made those and then I dumped um, you know some of the blocks using the one table file and some of the blocks using the other table file and then there is some fixed width. Uh, text and I dumps that dump that using the script I used to dump fixed width uh, text and it doesn't really matter which um, which table you use for those in particular uh, because it deals with the voicing of the characters differently but um, it seemed I, I had a really hard time dumping those really cleanly uh, it seems like it might actually you like group fixed width text of different widths together so i'm just i'm just gonna have to ha manually like hand edit a couple of those files just so that they're clean for for translation but i've dumped all that i've dumped the whole script so that should be ready to go so we'll see maybe i'll rise to the challenge and i'll translate that myself maybe i can pass that on to somebody else who is interested in it i don't know suffice to say i have been translating some of bahamas senki and this would probably translate to something like, uh, you know, Chronicles of Bahamut or Bahamut Chronicles, something like that. It's a little different from the Chronicles, um, uh, you know, Retsuden that we were talking about with the Famicom Jump Hero Chronicles. It's more of a, um, like a military uh, history. So, I and mean, I think that's really just because it's, a, it's like a tactical strategy RPG kind of game. I don't really think we have a great word for that, like, a, I don't know like the military history of Bahamut doesn't sound very interesting and it doesn't actually get across what the original Japanese is trying to get across so I don't know exactly um, what I'll use for the title for that but um, but yeah I've been translating a little bit of it I, I've just been picking at it I haven't like you know sat down and been like all right I'm just gonna start to finish get this done so you know I don't know how far I am in it maybe 20 25 percent done um, you know, I'm not in a huge rush, but I do want to get that done in the next, you know, within the next couple months, probably. So get that back to supper so we can have another, um, yeah, Sega Mega Drive game completed. Um, I've been really pleased with how the past, you know, whole year has gone in terms of translation projects. And, you know, my work is going to slow down on this eventually, but I think the next three months are probably going to be pretty productive as well. So uh, I'm going to be trying to dump more Game Gear games and, uh, you know, who knows, maybe some Famicom games and get some more stuff translated up here. So I will keep you guys posted. Uh, if I have more news, maybe you'll see another quarterly video from me. If not, maybe uh, maybe next year uh, we'll, we'll get another update. So thanks for joining me, and uh, catch you again later.